and we have Sentinels raising the trophy, I, I'm not surprised. No. I, I, I have the much time. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not surprised. They are literally that good, and they're about to prove uh -huh. it because they're going up against Knights again. A, the number one team yep. out of Latin America. This is no pushover squad, and if they're able to pull off a 3-0 or a 3-1, that would be a statement to the rest of this tournament. And Tony, ladies and gentlemen as well, if you see a map fly through, you know that's a great sign. We are about to finally get into our game here, our first game of the tournament, first game of the B stream. Sentinels and Knights, Tony, we have spent some time talking it up. I can't wait to see how they play. Yeah, as we kind of uh, mentioned before, before the game started here, we have Knights. Again, this is their best map and game type combination. Oh, yeah. If they're going to have any chance to beat Sentinels, not only in any game, but even in the series, it's going to start with momentum. It's going to start right here in game number one. If Sentinels win this, Knights are in trouble. And I think a big way to win is to start things strong off the opening strat. I can't wait to see what these teams put together. We're about to jump into that opening strat. So many areas to control three lanes to access. You can see they're already in the fray here. Tony Rocket's still up. It looks like on stream we've got Lethal here to contest them. <laughs> nice little back smack coming in out of Lethal. I know it says Bull on the bottom left hand corner, but we're actually Don't on board you. with Lethal. We got a nice back smack. Ends up getting himself rocket. And now we're seeing the V side control early in favor of Sentinels. Says nasty bullet on the overlay. So I'm thinking we're still with bullet here, unless he wants to kill his uh yeah, there's Atso, his teammate right in front of him. So looks like he's just going to play his life safely here behind the machine. He's got multiple to fight with. Unfortunately, Atso nowhere to be found in that fight, so he will lose it to Royal 2. You can see Royal 2 still up for the fight for A here. On board now. We're gonna switch gears over to towards Atso. Atso is gonna take it down early. That's gonna be lethal that gets the grenade kill. Big kills coming out of him as two down go knife and now you're gonna see sentinels in control early here in game number one a 34 to 0 run already i've been waiting to see him on screen tony but look who it is oh he didn't last for too long unfortunately dude royal two popping off on the feed by the way the tapping button someone you expect to see make big plays here so far shut down just a little bit royal two with four kills to start this tony I love this bait and switch action coming oh towards my. the red room. Then go in, oh. put down the damage, let your teammate get the kill, drop a double, and then just gain control once again. I said it before, the moment you see them get a clean three wipe, that's when you push for the trip cap, and that's exactly what Sentinels have right. just done. Taking slays as they do it. Tony, we might have put the highlight on the Royal 2, but it's Lethal who's currently 5-0 and to start this game. So just as a little tease to come into this, right? Whether or not Lethal pops off, I think is a big indicator of how well Sentinels will do. And so far, so good for this man as he gets right up close and personal. That's coverage on B, they got C. You can see they're already attacking A, and Lethal's still going in on the spawners here. I've said it before, man. Lethal have been looking very good in scrims recently. This man has really been stepping it up, and you're seeing it right here, seven and zero, oh, and he is three kills damn. away from dropping a killing frenzy, Alex. And this is one of those moments where you look back at the stats, and you're like, damn, how much does it matter, though? Right, PK, despite this being one of their best map game types, <laughs> 108 to two to start definitely says something about the coordination here at the Sentinels. And it's it's worrisome. It really is. If Sentinels can beat them on their best map and game type combination, I I, I I'm really worried for Knights throughout the rest of the season. Not only are they getting beaten right now, this is a dominant lead in favor of Sentinels. We're talking 130 to two. Oh my! Look at this combo at a snake bite here. By the way, Stalker Rockets. He's got so much freedom on the map. Dude, like he's lost two teammates. No, no worries though. He'll turn and burn the second. That's the assistant. Out of Frosty, nice use of the drop wall here just to give him some time. And look at him clean up shop off of it too. He'll take another kill. To quickly go down, Knights once again. Sentinels have always seemed to be in control because they've always had the numbers advantage. Knights need to find the way to not only stay alive, but to get that team shot going. They have to take Sentinels off the map because as of right now, Sentinels are clearly dictating the pace in the game. And the reason why is the slays, Tony. It's just so obviously in the favor of Sentinels here. You got everyone in the team upwards six and seven kills. We need to see some trades out of Knights. They need to see, start winning their, their 1v1s or else they're not going to get the opportunity to get into these hills here on board with Royal 2. He's going to come out for the challenge on the Rockets. That's a big one out of Drift, right? Earns him that center map. Hopefully access to Rockets in a second. 
Yeah, that was a pivotal kill coming out of Drift, but look at the kill fee once again. Lethal and Frosty getting back-to-back yep. -back kills to kind of equalize the situation. The same kill that Drift just got. He ends up going back to the black screen. Oh, now no. Sentinels will have control Ooh. of the Rockets, but a nade coming out of nowhere. Snake Bite ends up finding the back back onto one. Luckily, Drift taking down World Damn. 2 and tapping Buns getting a big kill onto Frosty. In a moment where kills matter most, this gives tapping maybe access to Rockets. Oh my god, the preemptive drop on the wall there too. Just to stay alive a little longer, unfortunately, does not turn any kills for it. The damage in will let Atso get one. We've got Atso with a second here as well, so big double from him. The Rockets still sit in center there. You know, I like that early drop one for two reasons. It gives you the edge in that gunfight, but sure. if he was able to grab hold of that rocket, he could have swung it back towards that drop wall for that extra cover oh and maybe my. get into a safer scenario. Sadly, they still went two down, and Sentinel still have that B-side control, so I don't know how much that really matters. I mean, the alternative is you think he flies in, throws the drop wall in front of the rockets as he picks them up to begin with, right? If he was that quick with it. Maybe he could have grabbed the Rockets safely. Either way, it's done and dusted. Tony, this game is about to be done and dusted. 2-11 and counting here. Sentinels are just dominating. Yeah, I love, I love the teamwork coming out of Frosty and Lethal as that Frosty doesn't end up going down there. But I mean, Lethal started off the game 7-0. and oh. Then he quickly switched his, I guess, switched his focus. Now he has seven assists at the moment and has sure. only died five times in this game. He is literally doing it all at the moment. I'm going to, I mean, all eyes are on Lethal when it comes to Kansas City. If sure. Lethal sure. steps it up and he plays to his ceiling, Sentinels can win the tournament. I, I mean, I will say it doesn't seem to matter who you look at on Sentinels at the moment. Tony, they're all frying, right? Everybody in double Divot digits uh, in the stats here. 236 on the board. Knights will temporarily pause it, but two of them die thanks to Snake Fight. You'll see Atso with two of his own to even out the slays here, but is it enough to hold on to B and C? This might have been the longest bout of control I think we've seen out of Knights all game, Tony. I mean, yeah, they're able to put 24 points on the board where previously they had about two. Uh, so it really wasn't looking good <laughs> for your good. Pittsburgh Knights. It's definitely not looking good for a drip as he takes a stray grenade right to the face, ends up earning the assist, but off screen, Nasty Bullet is going to be the first one to fall for Knights. Okay. The Sentinels will try to take advantage of the momentary advantage in numbers. Knights finally gathering some footing here. And the thing about strongholds on any map, but especially streets, is just how much it can snowball. So can they maintain the control as they've got it? 53 here, you can see the rotation out to A as Sentinels moves to C, but the, look, did he rock it himself? Or did he, I think he maybe, maybe tried to kill Frosty down below? He killed himself with it. A quick death comes in, and Knights try to take advantage. They tried to go for that trip cap onto Alpha, but sadly they were taken down quickly, and now we're seeing Sentinels once again put the double cap on the board, and they've just passed this the 240 point mark. It just might be it. Final five seconds to close this out. Nice, they got to get in the hill to stop it, but it looks like it's too little too late. And 250 to 63 to start this series. Tony, we talked about the importance of Knights winning game one and what could happen if they don't win. What happens if they not only don't win, but they get kind of obliterated in game one? What does that mean? Uh, I mean, means it smells good in here because them boys got cooked like Kansas City barbecue. Let me oh, tell you, <laughs> but that was that was crazy. Sentinels was crazy. were playing on another level again on arguably the night's best game type and map combination. Sentinels looking as good as ever. I really got to talk about Lethal though. Lethal stepped it up, starting yeah. off starting off the game seven and zero. And the ending up at one point, I want to say it was like ten and five with like eight assists. He started off slaying. His team needed to just put down damage to stay alive, so he quickly changed his focus, and yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a big Lethal fan. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to be, right? From not only just his play, but his personality that he brings to the game as well. But it raises a lot of questions, right? Do PK have the wherewithal to bounce back in this land? Can they find a way in this series? They still got some time to do so. Sentinels coming out as strong as they are, what does this mean about Sentinels and their potential going on in the tournament? Because damn, are they looking good. And like you said, Lethal, the first one to pop off to start the day, is always a good sign as well. So Sentinels, of course, all business today, bringing the heat. You know, PK may be thrown off by the speed of play, but they've still got some time to regain. Tony, they got to regain on Live Fire Slayer coming up next. Yeah, you know, I, I remember back at Halo 5, Slayer was the Sentinels' uh, Achilles heel, you know, going back in, the, back in the day. Coming into Halo Infinite, Sentinels are a damn good Slayer team. Sure. There are not many teams that can beat them in Slayer. I'm, I'm thinking maybe EU Knight and Cloud9 have had an advantage at least on Slayer over them. But other than those two teams, they're really taking it to players. Knights, yeah. they, you know, they, 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 got a, they got a long hill to climb.
Especially considering, I think, Knights historically have struggled in Slayer and tend to do better in the objective game types as well. We've got some stats apparently to pop up from this specific game. Oh, there you go, stats on screen, Tony. Just to get a bit of an indication on how things are going. And the first thing I see, not to be the guy to point it out, but 4 and 14 is not an ideal stat line to keep up with your squad, unfortunately, there at a nasty bullet. Did you say not to be the guy to point it out and then immediately that put him on that's, blast? That's that, what that, I that do. Just, I'm yeah, sorry, that's, nasty okay, bullet. I'm that's sorry. What, that's, what it, that's what it seemed like. But <laughs> I, know, I know, if anything, I know he's thinking about it, right? And, okay. and hopefully it doesn't affect him. He comes in confident in that next game and he plays his game. But to have the least kills and the most deaths, you never want that as a teammate. Well, you know what I'm thinking about? Snake bite dropping 16 kills, That's lethal big dropping 10 assists. Big deal, big That's deal. That's what I'm thinking about right now. I mean, it's hard not to think about that, Tony. Sentinels came out hotter than we probably could have imagined. 250 to 63 is a hell of a stat line to start the series. And I wonder what that means for game two. You got a snipe center map, you got a confident Sentinels, you got Frosty and Royal 2 on that team. Then you got Snake Bite with 16 kills, and Lethal's playing pretty hot, too. I mean, man, everything is pointing towards a 3 0 at this rate. There's so many implications when it comes to pool play. Like, it's so important to have yourself a good seating when you're going into championship brackets. Like, there's, like, this stigma going on in the competitive community. Like, if you want to be the best, you got to, you got to beat the best, which is true. Sure. But if you have an easier road due to coming out hot in the pools, I think it's really important. If you can get yourself a better side of the bracket and make it as far as possible through the winner's bracket and then hopefully maybe stay in there, sure. I think that's really good for your momentum and really good for your overall placing in the tournament, this this matters. It really does matter. Definitely. I mean, yeah, it's if you get a favorable side of the bracket or pool, and that allows you to go a little bit farther than you may have otherwise, great. You know, that gives you more pro points, I guess, to the next tournament. But in the, the end of the day, you're still going to face that final boss. You're still going to face that, that top team, and that top team will still expose you if you're not ready for it. So I think that's the beauty of these tournaments is despite right. where you land, despite whether or not it's fair, in the end of the day, everyone has to ice up. Everyone has to face their C9, their optic gaming, if they want to come out on top. But if you're just coming here for top six or top eight or top 16, I mean, by all means, you can take your favorable section of the pool. Either way, Tony, what it's not, uh, what's not favorable, I guess, is just PK in their position currently. Not ideal. But if anything, you got to see it as a blessing, right? Sentinels could be top three, could be the team to win in this tournament. If PK can bounce back against this team, maybe there's no stopping them. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I have high expectation for the Knights. It, do I have them finishing top four? Maybe not. But do I, do I want to see them maybe break it to that top eight? Do I want to see them maybe break it to that top six? Absolutely. And if they're yeah. playing at their best, they are a dangerous squad that we have here in the tournament. And it's time for them to prove it. You right. cannot get swept by any team in this tournament, not even Sentinels, if you're trying to make a statement. Knights, we are looking at you. A lot of talent in the Latam Halo community. The first time we've seen them at an infinite land, and I know that can be scary, but this is their moment to shine. So, Tony, like you said, we'll put the brought the, uh, the spotlight right back on them. Sentinels coming in to steal it for sure, but we've got our map on screen. We are about to get into this one, Tony. First to 50 kills takes the win. 12 minutes on the clock. You have the snipe rifle. You have the heat wave. And don't forget about that power that comes up. It's on a little bit of a delay. Sure. So the, you have the opportunity to fight for some of those other power weapons before you dedicate your resources to sneaking in for the power up. And speaking of being sneaky, who do we see? We see Lethal Crouch walking his way around cuts right above him. He's got Snake Bite. Snake Bite already with the heat wave, by the way. Close quarter scenario he could force. Unless he gets flanked. A beautiful little play tonight Knights as they slip out from behind him to take control of Overshield. Tapping with a clutch kill on the Royal 2 might give him access. You can see he's got someone there to fend him off. That was a snipe in the hands of that Sentinels player. So while he's got OS, they still got to watch their faces here. It looks like it's Frosty. Knights are going to need this OS if they want to put some separation in the scoreboard. They got to put it to use. They can't get Plaza Pistol, and they also can't get sniped by Frosty, right. who's sitting there towards the top tower with it. But now we're on board tapping. tapping. Much. Beautiful flank, getting right behind enemy lines, taking down one, gets the kill on the second one. Two down goes Sentinels, and Knights are in control. Snake fight with a big trade to shut down tapping, and hopefully Frosty still has an opportunity to make a play with the snipe here. I think he's got two shots still to work with. Snake Bite gonna go up and draw the attention to himself. Maybe melt from a heat wave. Frosty still in the fray here, but can he do damage at this point? The man is weak. Getting pressured. Slides okay. in with the spree and the double kill though, so he's putting it together. 
Yeah, well, all, well, all that craziness was happening over towards bottom mid. Frosty was sitting over towards the tower side with the sniper staying alive, and now he's ready to put it to work. That's a big double kill coming out of Frosty and nice. Sentinels. Another one will fall. That's going to be Atso and Tapping Buns quickly to good. join him on the black screen. Tony, look at the stats on screen there. 6-0 and oh out of Frosty. He's starting this game flawlessly. Of course, I might have cast or cursed him right there. <laughs> Tapping will delete the man. But that's what you'd want to see if you're on Sentinels. On the other hand, you want to shut down Frosty as much as you can if you want a chance to bounce back in this. You can see Sentinels start to pull away here with 13. On board now with Snakebite goes in for the challenge of the Tapping Buns, but Tapping Buns able to put him down. And now for one of the first times in this game, we're seeing Knights start to gain okay. control, not only having the Slays on their side, but also having a bit of map control. Sentinels spawning over towards that bottom mud side of the map. Drift just testing the waters here, too. You can see does not want to expose himself. Let Bullet do the dirty work. Snake Bite with two on the feed, though. Bullet coming in to do some damage. There's Drift with the pickup. Make it 14 to 15 here. Only half the team left to go for this fight. And that's all they need to double team Snake Bite. They'll shut him down. Got numbers outside here, so I love to live at a Bullet just to make, make things difficult. And let me tell you, the Knights are not really the best Slayer team normally, but they are punching way above their weight class at the moment. They are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sentinels, and I am impressed. The Sniper Rifle is up, and it looks like Lethal is trying to be that forward player, trying to be that body shield. So I believe that Frosty is able to get his hands on it. Frosty ends up finding one. Now oh. goes this for the drive side, but not able to get the kill onto Nasty Bullet. Oh. Luckily, State Fight comes in for the cleanups. Three down go Knights. Sentinels are in the driver's seat once again. PK doing everything they can though to trade blows. Look at this. My eyes have been on that sniper, Tony. Where is it landing? The sniper will dictate the pace of this game. You can see it's on the floor, and you know that Adso wants to get near it, but the man can't. He's got too many nades on him. Teammate there to pick up the slack, though. I think that's Nasty Bullet with the kill under Frosty and tapping with the marksman there on the snake fight. He'll grab the nades as he gets out of the fight, but can't stay up long. I'm not sure where that snipe went, Tony. He might have despawned at this rate. Bullet able to push up over toward the sandbag side. Excellent shots coming out of him, but more important, staying alive than dropping down towards Drift. Now we're going to see a bait and switch coming out of Knights. Oh Beautifully boy. played. You don't have to win all of your individual gunfights to be effective on the map. That teamwork does indeed make the dream work. I mean, it definitely helps. There's a snipe, by the way, peeking into the fray here. World 2, he's managed to slip away with it. And the most dominance we've seen in this game has come from that rifle, unless you're tapping buttons, though, right? No fear, just shuts him down. Nasty with a trade too. PK gonna go up by two in this exchange. And I think, well, the lead is narrow. It's the biggest we've seen so far. And that was a momentary two down for Sentinels. PK oh. needs to take advantage of that. They need to be aware of where Sentinels are spawning and immediately put pressure. But now Sentinels are back on the map. And now, I mean, they've already regained. I think that was an opportunity for Knights to start to collapse on those spawning players. The sniper's been a bit of a hot potato here, Tony. Everyone at Sentinel's doing everything they can to just hold on to it, make sure Knights doesn't get it, Snake Bite. Can he line something up here, though? Trying to get the angle on the cuts, and a difficult one to do. You can see Lethal coming in to take the attention, though, make things a little bit easier for Snake Bite. He's gonna back off PK. You can see PK respecting them, though, too. Sentinel's with a high ground setup here, and PK, they do not want to give up anything for free. Lethal with the plasma pistol in hand, only five and five with four assists at the moment. He's gonna go down for six death. But speaking of stats, Snake, Snake Fight really taking things oh into God. his own hands. 13 kills, has only died eight times. It's even throwing up six wow. assists as well. Honestly, land Snake Fight, Tony. He's always going crazy on land. So I expect him to make big plays with 14 to start. Oh. They need to shut him down. You can see him trying to get out with the weapons there. Bullet going to come in to pick up the heat wave. Looks like he will get up with his life and into a back smack. Nice little communication and timing at a PK there. They still have an advantage here, Tony. That they do, and we're on board now with Bullet off screen. Atso able to get that first kill onto Frosty. The moment you get those numbers advantage, you have to take advantage. That's exactly what Knights do. They end up getting right. two more kills on the feet, and Sentinels go three down. Now we see the 40 point mark being reached here by Knights. Bullet going in for the oh. challenge with the heat wave, bringing the heat, taking down one, but he's quickly will be dealt with. Biggest opportunity to close out the game is right here, right now. 43, drift with the snap out of the snipe. Can't quite put it together. You can see World 2 picked it up. He picked up the OS and the Sniper. They're down by four. They got all the weapons. This ain't good for PK if World 2 starts icing up. Beautiful shots out of him, too. And notice he dropped the heat wave for the team. The patience out of him here. 
Love the recovery coming out of World 2. Start off the game 5 and 10. Now look at his stats. He's at 10 and 12 at the moment. Okay. The sniper rifle in hand. That's but Drift ends up getting the double kill off the screen. The Bayus is going to come in once again. This time Frosty picking up the kill on the oh. tapping button. The assist being earned from World 2 as he takes out another one. But a well-placed grenade out of bullet is going to give them control once again. PK doing exactly what they need to here. Just roll in numbers, take trades, force Sentinels to lose numbers on these exchanges. And they're at least going to hold on to the narrow lead they've got. You can see Frosty with the kill, though, brings it to 44. Two left to close it, though. Atzo with one with the heat wave. He's lost his life. And they double their way out through B here. That player in a very risky spot might be losing his life. Tapping, looking for it, but doesn't get the kill. That makes it 47, Tony. What is happening here? There was a nice lead going in favor of Knife. They were in the well, winner's circle right now, but now we're seeing Sentinel start to bounce back. They're within striking distance of stealing this game number two away, Alex. I mean, what was that live, though? He was on B stronghold. Maybe there was a, an issue with communication, but Tapping just not looking in the right place to locate him. And he doesn't get the kill because of it. Now 48 still. Only two to close it, but make it tied. Tony, this just got dicey. I swear this was a 47 to 42 game at one point in favor of Knights. I don't know Tappy what happened one. in the scoreboard. The Tapping does get a pivotal kill. Now we're seeing Tapping going in for the right challenge here. outside the ground. Oh. Ends up getting the kill, and that's going to be it. Your Knights taking game number two and tying up the series. The dream Ooh. upset is still alive. It might have looked rough for Tapping at the very end there. With, I think it was Lethal staying alive on the B stronghold. Didn't quite connect, but man. Did he make up for it with those final two kills, right? I think it was one with the Heat Wave, the BR to close it out, and a quick execution on it, too. We had the player running away, and a second one coming in for the bait and switch, but he managed to get the kill in time to not have to worry about a last-second comeback. It got scary for a second, Tony, but uh, that's the beauty of a closely contested Halo series. And you and nice have to be careful, though. I, I want to see cleaner gameplay. There's no reason sure. why it should be a 47-42 game and the game's ending 50-49 to 49 or 50-48. to 48. Knights needs, at that point, you're playing for trades. Just stick together, yeah. fly in, and somebody be kamikaze. If one goes down and you're able to get the bait and switch in there and take and make it a, a you know, a 1v1 scenario, oh at that God. point, you're looking good. I want to see Knights be able to close these games out a little bit cleaner, especially if they're going to beat the likes of sure. Sentinels. Good point tony a couple things to point on the stats here of course snake bite going absolutely massive 18 kills is huge oh yeah a big one though gotta you know pay mention to, to nasty bullet 14 11 having a rough game one he bounces back in game two and what does that do for his team they come out with a win yeah and uh, I, mean, I mean you know drift Nasty bullet tapping buzz. These guys really stepped it up. I'm, I'm well, the assist that I'm at a drift, by the way, assist I, leader. I was oh, just, 12. I was just about to say, I, I love the fact that I'm seeing 12 kills coming out of drift and also 12 assists as well. You That's that. a big stat that pops off. Man, big point you brought up at the end of that game, though, right? The fact that they did have a five kill advantage in a situation where you'd expect them to close that out strong. The biggest thing, though, I think Tony was the power weapon control we saw at the end at a Royal 2, right? He had a sniper, he had the OS, they had the heat wave on the side of Sentinels. I think that was the difference maker. And a lesser team might have still lost that. They might have allowed Sentinels to clutch up. I think despite it being as close as it was, they still did a pretty good job of neutralizing that sniper in that situation, forcing a couple trades. I think it was clutch nades that came out of Atso. I'm pick a favorite. I, I really like Knights on Capture the Flag. But Me Sentinels too. have been looking really good at any objective play, including Stronghold. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go four-two in favor of. You think Sentinels. Knights got? Oh, okay, okay, in favor of Sentinels. I'm gonna side with you, Tony. We've been siding together on the same side. I don't like it too much. Yeah. Too early in the tournament. I don't know what that means, Tony. We're gonna have to find, uh, you know, some some reasons to I'm disagree. Going You're going Knights. I'm going Knights. You change your mind real quick. Yeah. No. Tony, I don't think it really matters where this one goes for our predictions. I think what matters is the gameplay we're about to see here. And I think the opening strat will set the pace, so we'll hop on board with Frosty to kick it off. And we talked about the car side control being so important. What does Frosty go for immediately? Goes for the car side Ooh. control, puts the dynamo grenades to work, but ends up going three Look down the Sentinels. Knight in firm control here on Aquarius to start the game. Massive kill and a lethal, though. Drift will drop him. But because Lethal got that kill, Nasty Bullet couldn't safely get the camera. Looks like Tapping will still bounce out with it. So the favorable opening they had did give them the sandbox, but it didn't give them any safety in that situation. You can see Tapping has lost his life. He trades with World 2. That's a heat wave down. Frosty, what's he controlling? That's the second round of Dynamos. He's got him again, Tony. 
The sidekick's so deadly in Halo Infinite, it can absolutely shred shields. And with the drop weapon meta still being in effect, you can shred shields, immediately pull out that battle rifle, and go for the finishing kill. And that might be what Frosty does immediately as he goes okay. in, switches to the BR, gets the finishing kill, and now has that car side control here for Sentinels. One down for Knights, and you know Sentinels can take advantage of numbers as good as any team in the league. Tiny with, sorry, uh, Frosty with a ton of firepower there. He did toss his dynamos out, but here's the opportunity Snakebite was looking for. He threw flag out center. Frosty gonna come down from below. Looks like he's got positioning to get to it, but doesn't want to give up his life just yet. Gonna spot one out top car. Look at him predicting the angle of attack here. You can see the player going down below. He's tossing nades in. Oh my god, he, the sidekick gonna come into play here too, plus the thrust. I mean, it's the use of the sandbox that keeps him alive. Now we're seeing Bullet grab a hold of those dynamo grenades right as the camouflage is coming up. Starting himself a quick assist. The second one comes in. Beautiful damage wow. coming in. Bullet able to get the final shot onto Royal 2. And now it is Sentinels that are two down and Knights getting right. right behind enemy lines. Sentinels with an attempt on the flag so far, but now it is Knight's turn. And you got Bullet running this through utility. So far, so good. Only been tagged up once. Does he have teammates to cover it though? Look at Frosty on pink side here just to get the defense. He got one down bottom. He'll take Atso as well. So that flag run, not safe yet. He's got a great checkpoint for it, but he needs to stay up in time for his teammates. You can see he doesn't have many of them in this situation. I love the awareness out of Bullet, though, to drop that flag over to a utility side, and uh, knowing that Sentinels are already extend, uh, overextending. If he would have committed to that flag going into the base, he would have not only died, the Reacher would have came in, and most likely would have been a counter cap. This oh, way, no. they have a chance it to clear in. out their base and maybe stop Sentinels from this run, but Snakebite already having oh. that flag towards the car side of the map. See, Sentinels taking full advantage, right? They, that was like surgically kind of, uh, you know, implemented, if, if, if I can find the right word, Tony. But they, they got all the kills across the map and didn't worry about Bullet. They shut Bullet out. They said, go ahead, take the flag, run it through utility. We're going to kill your whole team and use our numbers to take the flag back. It looks like BK have an idea to do the same here. They'll take a counter of their own. They're going to get it right back to you, Phil. Gamer tag is nasty bullet. I want to change a nasty flag run, getting it oh towards the car God. side, not taking any damage whatsoever. There is a player on Sentinel that was able to steal away that flag, knock it off the base, and now we see Lethal going in for the return and another counter pull. Okay. We've seen three counter pulls so far, yeah. but nobody able to cap a flag yet in this game. We're kind of just ping pong in the flag at this point. Lethal gonna drop one though. That's massive. He'll put the flag straight out bottom. Car takes two with the heat wave. That gives him access to a big run here, Tony. Lethal going in for the slide, ends up pulling the flag. Beautifully played by Lethal. Not only was that a quicker route to get it towards your side of the base, but he took very little damage while doing it. Now he's in the wow. home stretch and he's able to cap that flag home. If he didn't go for that drop slide with the flag, most likely that flag wouldn't have gone in as easily as it did. I mean, if he didn't get those two clutch kills, he wouldn't even have gotten out of utility, right? So unreal at a lethal to put that together, clutch up, and then run the flag. Put the first point on the board for Sentinels. You can see that Sentinels are not done, apparently, as well. They're looking to run the second one out through Util Drift, waiting down below the world, too. He's ready for it. He's got his teammate to win the fight as well. And can they continue to win fights, though? All of PK, they're flying into Util here. Two players from the night squad just flying in and getting the easy kills. And now we're seeing tapping buttons command the space on top mid. But as I say that, two go down on the kill feed. Tapping buttons able to take down one, but that's three down for the boys in blue. Sentinels will be taking advantage of this. Atso just trying to play defense, but you can see every time he comes back to base, Sentinel's running another, and what a fast run at a snake fight. He dropped it to bottom mid, and I want to say less than two seconds. Man's already got it on the opposite side. He'll plant that one in. Despite losing his team, it doesn't matter. That's two on the board. You know, we, we call him Snake Bite, but you know, he's, he's playing like Land I mean, Bite right he's now. He's slithering it's just, down by the Land Bite. Land Snake Bite land is bite. just different. Commando in hand's gonna put it to work, immediately dropping towards the VR, but that player's not gonna go down easily, wow. but eventually he will be taken out. Two down for Knight Sentinels, having all four players up. This is where Sentinels are at their most dangerous. 12, 7, 9, the score, li score line for Snake Bite popping off in this game. Frosty doing so as well. Roll 2. Not going to give PK any room to breathe here, Tony. They're still pulling flags. The moment they got their momentum, it just seems like Knights have been unable to keep up. They need to find a way to slow this down. 
And as much as we talked about the car side runs, we are seeing the first P side run make it not only through bottom P, but also towards the courtyard side of the map, but it hasn't been secured just yet. In fact, Nasty Bullet gonna slide in and get some return. Knights do have numbers and they're already pushed up, but Sentinels are coming right off the of spawn and recovering to perfection. Pressure still coming in here through utility out of Knights. You love to see it. They're gonna drop a couple out of Sentinels. This might give them access to Flag Frosty though. He's here to ruin their day. Perfect shots. And he doesn't get the kill, though. PK going to slip away with that flag just barely. This gives him a chance out through blue court to run it through. And it looks like Adso will just barely make this happen. Tony, this is a game. Adso going to slide that in. It's a 2-1 lead. Still in favor of Sentinel. But with five minutes on the clock, Knight definitely could get plays and be able to cap another sure. flag. Sentinels are not at the home stretch just yet. Knight's still finding opportunities here. Got to watch out for these dynamos though, right? Sentinel's controlling them heavily throughout the game. That, that allows Snakebite to live and stay up in utility. Nasty does take the trade on the lethal in the meantime. Snakebite still being a nuisance. Definitely they're calling him out, but can they get to him? As he just narrowly stays alive in these situations. Frosty gonna find his time to enter the fray here too. He does take Adso. He's gonna watch out for Nasty though. You can see him up above. It looks like he is currently not at the controller. We'll see if we're resetting anything here. So far, two to one in this game. Sentinels, Knights. Yeah, normally when you see a Still player uh, go, go idle like that, it's usually not because they went to a bathroom break. It usually means that maybe somebody might have crashed. But uh, mm. Sentinels are running this flag out. I mean, they're, they're up 2-1 as we know, but there is some dead air here. So I'm going to assume there's going to be uh, there's going to be some some kind of restart going right. in as knights have literally stopped playing. Yeah, the entirety of PK have decided to put their controllers down. So we're going to get the update in just a second as to how this will go. But of course, the two to one scoreline that will stay true. Tony, I don't see any reason to change that. And we're back. HCS Kansas City, our Halo Major Tournament. This is the B Stream brought to you by Xbox Plays. And we're back in the match. Tony, this is, of course, a reminder. If you're just tuning in, we are resetting this match with a 1-0 lead to Sentinels. They need four to close the game. Knights will need five, of course, game three in the series. And if Knights don't be careful, it could be worse than that because they just momentarily went four down and Sentinels are already getting aggressive into their base. But a pivotal kill coming out of Drip oh. going to take down Frosty. World 2 going to do some work as well. This might give him access to Blue. He's getting tagged up from behind though. Snakebite will clean up the kill for the trade, but he's in trouble. Can't bounce out of bottom mid. That's because you got Knights up on top controlling center. Lethal gonna try to stay alive here over towards the utility side of the map. Does feel the pressure, able to put one down to one shot, but he realizes he's in at least a 1v2 scenario, so he immediately backs down and is trying to wait for his teammates to come in. But it looks like Knights have a different plan oh. in action, but Lethal taking down Nasty Bullet before going down himself. Big win in that fight. Did lose his life, but winning fights like that, definitely a confidence booster for you and the team. Tapping, can't win his own. World 2 going to narrowly survive. Adso there to thankfully pick up the pieces. They'll hold on to top map. But can they get past this 50-yard line? It looks like they will. PK getting hyper-aggressive in the back base. Drip going to lead the charge. Snakebite with a trade. And Frosty pulling the flag in the meantime, though. So PK, they got to watch their back here. Frosty was able to get that flag all the way down the bottom card side and over towards oh, his courtyard. But Adso getting the double kill. And on top of that, getting the return. Massive. Big plays coming in out of Adso Ichia. That's so completely saving that situation. Unfortunate timing there out of Knights, though, right? A trade in a, in a spot you wouldn't want to see it. Lethal with a big kill. Knights without safety getting back base. You can see bullets here, but he is in trouble. Tagged up by one. Can take this fight, though. No, not quite able to do it just yet. It looks like Lethal will clean him up. That's two dead. And while that happens, Sentinel's going to get aggressive here. Yeah, Sentinel's doing a great job of defending their base, clearing out their base, and now they're looking to Where's turn this though? defense into offense here. Beautiful shots coming in out of Lethal. That player will be cleaned up by World 2 off the screen. Frosty's is. able to take down Drift, and you asked where the camera was, it's in the hands of Frosty. Dangerous for PK. Frosty gonna sneak his way up in the base. Look at how he's checking Fridge as he does it. That spawner did split up. One back base as well. He ended up getting pinched from both sides, so PK with the defense they needed. Can they hold it, though? That's Drift with... One in the Royal 2. He flies in for a triple. The man's going off. 
Triple kill coming in out of Drift. That's going to be the energy that Knights need to come back in this game. And they're riding that momentum. Anso Atso able to take down one. Tapping one, striking second by taking down Frosty. So now you see not only a triple kill, but another two down for Sentinels. That means a flagpole for Knights. Knights so tenacious in this situation, right? Despite going down, losing numbers, they're always finding ways to break through. Sentinels doing the same, though. Flag out. You can see that one player just milking his life. He does die. And maybe this is Knight's opening they've been waiting for. Taking it through the last links. Gonna need a teammate to step on that return real quick and open up opportunity to plant it in. That'll tie our game. It's 1-0 on the board, but overall, Tony, it's a 1-1 here in this series. Great job for Knights. So once again, they're back in this game and looking to put in the work. Not done yet, but Snake Fight looking to shut down Atso immediately. And now is the Snake Fight right behind oh, enemy no. lines. Goes in for the first side and the bowl, but not able to get the flag out of the base. I mean, it might have looked pretty, but he left behind the flag, so he'll have to double back, wait for the team to help him try again. Try, try, he will. What a bait and switch, though, right? The teamwork at a Sentinels to break through. Snake fight with the double. He can turn back for spawners. He's already got Royal 2 cover in pink side. This is a guaranteed flag. They just did it. Yeah, I mean, it was a momentary four down for Knights. There's no chance that anybody can stop this flag if they're not on the map side way. Now we're going to see a 2-1 lead in favor of Sentinels. And Frosty's already in the enemy base before getting needed out. PK going to quickly turn two. Gonna need to bounce back here, of course, 2-1. Sentinels leading the board. Can they find another opportunity? Looks like we are playing with a full timer here, I believe, Tony. So still got 721 to make an impact. Tapping to try to skate out with the heat wave would be massive. If he can do it, he'll collect a thrust along the way, too. Heat wave in the hands of tapping buttons. Despite him going all the way down to one shot, he's able to stay alive and get his shields back. But he is being hunted down by oh, all no. of Sentinels. And finally, World 2 going to be able to take him down. Atso going to try to catch an angle Jeez. from bottom car. He needs to stop this flag from grinding focus. And you see PK constantly forced to turn around. Sentinels getting so aggressive, getting to back base so quickly, forcing PK to delay themselves and win big fights in the back of their base. But winning those big fights, they don't give them access to the map, right? They just slow down the inevitable. Sentinels off spawn, they get back to center. They just rinse and repeat. We got two dead in the field. We got Frosty with the dynamos. I mean, Tony, it's about to, to hurt. Frosty and Sentinels in the back base of Knights. He's able to get some, uh, some ticks, some audible ticks out of that shock grenade, but not able to get the kill. Two down for Sentinel. We do see a challenge coming out of Lethal, but he's not able to take down Atso. Atso getting a big kill. Frosty going to come in for the cleanup, but it looks like yeah. all of Sentinels have been cleared out of the Pittsburgh Knights base, and now they're looking to mount some offense onto the boys in red. But as they try to, where are Sentinels, Tony? They're on pink, they're on mid already, and this is the situation we've seen all game sentinels they're so quick and they're keeping them pressured to the point where the when they finally do get kills they get back to center and they just face him again thankfully for tapping buttons though he's getting some big kills in this situation he stays up they're gonna try to get the camo and bullet just gonna barely do so Tapping Buttons is getting some big kills, already having 12 assists for his squad, but now he's starting to put the heat wave to work. He does end up going down. Luckily, Nasty Bullet able to get away with the camel, finds the quick one shot, but runs right into a dynamo grenade. That is not good for Bullet. Bullet just trying to stay up here, put the camel to good use, but Royal 2 not going to let him have it. Royal 2 not going to stay up, though. Tapping will take the kill for the trade. Frosty coming in with a perfect off the spawn, though. You know he's hitting his shots. You can see the flag is out too. So already onto the respawners here. He's not letting them breathe. And once again, you're seeing Sentinels really start to work this P side of the map here. I mean, it doesn't matter what side of the map, as long as they're finding the slate oh, and, they're, and they're getting some efficient flags, this is going to look really good for Sentinels as he's trying to get behind the lines. Ends up having to go in for the challenge and Drip willing to accept it. Great attempts at a snake bite though, right? Didn't quite make it to the flag in time. Tried to thrust to close the distance for some melee, get a trade out of that situation. So doing all the right things, just not quite coming together against PK there. And maybe that means PK can find an opening they need. You can see they're in back base. Sentinel's getting aggressive. Same type of situation we saw previously, Tony. They, they leave that flag behind, they just go for the opposite side, slam on the way back. 
And just to remind you guys at home, even though you're seeing a title game at one apiece right now, because of the reset, Sentinels still have a one point advantage over Knights. So Knights are really against, you know, they're really against the wall. They have four minutes to try to put a cap on the board. And although that may be enough time in theory, they still have to do it against Sentinels. They got to do it against Frosty, who's just waiting in Utah. Look at this. Take the shields off one, get a double back, beat a second, and almost take that fight despite being halfway dead. Looks like PK will take advantage of the opening. In the meantime, though, that's a convenient back smack on the lethal. Might get access to camo. Double team for the double here at a tapping buttons. He's putting it together and doing so with the perfect timing. And once again, Bullet able to get a hold of the camouflage. That is two in a row for Bullet and Place. your Knights roster. We are seeing Sentinels start to extend over toward the peace side oh map. God. Bullet is defining the one-shot world too. Excellent communication and active listening coming out of Knights. They are going to get the numbers. Two down go Sentinels, and that means Knights are starting to pull oh no. yet another flag. Bullet trying to quickly dip out of the action here. He did not quite get the flag to Util, so it's not safe yet. You can see his whole team opposite side of the map. And unfortunately, despite the efforts out of PK, that one will not go through. Return. World 2 just doing so much damage in center all while it happens. Look at him stay alive here, Tony. World 2 going all the way down to one shot, still taking damage, but able to recover his shields as he makes his way toward the bottom piece side of the map and earning himself a heat wave because of it. Frosty going in for the challenge. He's going to take down one, but he's going to get cleaned up himself. But all of these trades really going in favor of Sentinels, right. who again, 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the Whoa. clock now. Now Knights are going to start to feel the pressure. Time against him, but the flag's still out regardless. Knight's going to try to make that work. Drift with a massive kill back base. Bullet needs to do the same, but he can't. That's too dead. Drift gonna come and clean it up, though. Still got the flag, taking it down through car. They need this one, Tony. Two minutes to execute. Flag making it all the way toward the utility side, but oh. that stray nade is going to stop him short. But it looks like Bullet able to take that one off the screen. Tapping got touch. buttons going right after Frosty. So numbers in favor of Knights. They might be too able dead. to cap this flag. Maybe not, though. Sentinel still getting slays. That's three dead. They're sitting on the flag. Can they get to it in time? He gets the touch, but it doesn't matter, right? If you're just throwing your body at a flag that is that is just chalked at this point, is it even worth it? Because what happens next, Tony? Sentinels, they get a pull now. That they do. Snake bite already getting it toward the bottom car side and onto the utility side. Curb slide comes in, able to get that flag forward, but we do see a counter pull coming out okay. of night. So Sentinels will have to go in, get the return before they're able to secure this capture. Knights fighting with everything they've got in this game. They know the importance of taking this one, but they need to win this standoff just to bring it to a tie, Tony. Oh, and unfortunately, he's deleted. That was the defense line on the flag. He's got Atso to pick it up, but the more they lose their numbers, the less positioning they have to hold off here. Another slay going in favor of Sentinels Knights. You end up going three out of four players down. Bullet trying to get into the action to stop this return from coming in. Excellent grenade coming out of Bullet, but he's not able to stay alive. That's going to be a return. And with only 50 seconds on the board, Frosty faces this a three to one game. Sentinel so coordinated, so deadly, right? Frosty planting in that third flag, and then the bank nade down as he slides in for the melee trade, just knowing. Just knowing that player is going to be there, you know they're so aware. And the combination of it all just too much for light for Knights uh, right now, Tony. Yeah, Sentinels came into this game with an advantage due to the reset. But it looks like they didn't even need that advantage to come out on top as the final score is going to end up being 3-1. We're just waiting yep. for the final seconds to come in because I, I, it must be mathematically possible for Knights to cap two flags in seven seconds. According to the game, though, <laughs> if they did pull the flag, sudden death would trigger. But it looks like even that is not a possibility at this rate. Sentinels just locking down. Game three. It's been a hard fought series, Tony, but Sentinels, they continue to pull away. That they do, and I mean, we can't say we're surprised here. I mean, Sentinels, again, the former number one team in the world. I'm not talking about in the region, I'm talking about sure. in the world. Sentinels have been there, done that, and to be honest with you, They've been looking so good in that phase tournament, in scrims. Sentinels seemingly get better and better, and they are coming for that championship. Right, when it comes to tournament wins, when it comes to land experience in general at a high level, there's just so many advantages on the side of Sentinels. 
so few for Knights to really, you know, grab onto, especially now at this deficit. They are at match point in this series. If they can't bounce back in this next game, they are donezo for their first game. Of course, we're still in pools. Here's some stats on screen just to give us an indication of how that went, Tony. Yeah, I mean, Royal 2 and Snake by both E being able to get over 7,000 damage in the game. Drift actually going to have the most damage at 7,201, right. but even that wasn't enough to secure them the win and now we're going into a game number four sentinels have the opportunity to put this down i, I do right. want to say i mean i hate to be that guy you said it's going to be 3-0 i said it's going to be 3-1 my prediction still intact okay all right <laughs> tony one one tony zero shy away we'll see how that goes as the day goes on this is a small battle in the grand scheme of things uh tony I'm, I'm pretty pretty confident in the war i'm gonna win either way uh oddball live fire coming up next and uh like we've kind of alluded to sentinels with this much heat this much momentum and just overall experience you know who's to say knights even have what it takes to bounce back in this game at this point sentinels and knights what could be the final game in our first series of the day unless Knights got something to say about it. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people at home would be surprised if Sentinels were able to close out this game right here, right now, but I am not counting out the Knights just yet. The Knights have already won on this very map. You're going into oddball, statistically one of Sentinels' weakest game types. This is your time to shine. Send it to a game number five. Make a statement right here. And if someone's going to make a statement, I'll leave it up to Drift to do so. He'll drop lethal to start. That's access to snipe. A couple trades will go through. But with this weapon, you'd expect Drift to make a couple plays early on here. Wow. You were talking about before the series started how deadly of a sniper Drift is, and he's about to have the chance to prove it right. against you know one of the best in the business. The no scope right into the melee is going to take down one, but not able to get the double kill. Does Drift numbers still going in favor of Knights as they are right. holding onto this ball, and Sentinels have a bit of a longer rotation to try to break the center. Exactly. Despite the death out of Drift, the bright side out of the situation, 20 points in counting as Knights lock down a setup in the A side. It's great efficiency to start this game. Just a matter of whether or not Sentinels come in hot with the break on this setup. You can see Snake by taking his time to access it. Couple shots in the ball, but quickly pinched and taken down. Once again, Knight's gonna come out on top with those slays. They earn back the snipe as well. This time, tapping buttons has it. Three out of four members going down for Sentinels. Knights oh. have taken the early lead and control in the game. Tapping buttons showing what he can do with the sniper rifle as well. Peeling Snake by head off, and Knights are still putting points on the board. Unfortunately for tapping, that was the last shot in the chamber. He made it work, but no more to use at this point. They've still got 55 and counting, though, right? Knight's just locking down A. Sentinel's yet to find an answer. Maybe Frosty will be the one to do it as he's knocking on the front doors, takes a double with him. Can he stay up for the third and fourth player? Almost does so. But two more trades come in from Knights as they even the odds here. That ball being rotated in the meantime, though, I like this from Sentinel's. At the very least, they get the ball out to open space. Not gonna make it easy for PK to bounce back. Yeah, I don't know if Frosty was knocking on the door as much as he was knocking it down and breaking through the house yeah, for polite. Knights, but somehow Knights are able to not only grab a hold of the ball, but now you're seeing them rotate all the way toward the power up side of the map and taking the tower side control. Oh. And Sentinels once again have to break the setup. They only have three points. Right, what an answer out of Knights winning their fights to bring that ball back to backseat and try to get just a couple more seconds. Looks like they do play it off the map, rightfully so. You can see Frosty coming in hot here, but 74 to three to start, Tony. We talked about this being a weaker map game type for Sentinels, and maybe this is proof of it, of course, still early on. Don't count the Knights out just yet. I mean, obviously Sentinels are still in it. They can still come back, but as of right now, round number one has been dominated by your Pittsburgh Knights. Right. Lethal gonna try to get away with the ball. Love the fact that he's able to drop the ball, put down some damage before trying to get it out. But here come Knights once again. One good ball hold out of Sentinels and they could make this game uh, quite a bit closer. And to do that, they need the map, they need the weapons. You can see Royal 2 coming in aggressively, mainly because he's got the heat wave to do damage with. Can he stay up with it though? The baiting and switching at a Knights as they use their numbers here. They take three. 
and they take the ball as well. This could be the setup to close the game if they lock it down. Yeah, Sentinels really are in trouble. This might be the final push that they have to possibly break the setup and tap the buttons. Look like almost sticking the teammate there. Able to nice. take down one, earns the assist onto the second one. We still see Sandbass control in favor of Sentinel, but it looks like they're going to play the ball off of the map. And Tadmus playing that player off the map yeah. as well. Nasty double out of tapping buttons. This is going to give Drift a little bit more safety. Approaching the ball off spawn here. I like the rotation to get back to his team, though. That opens things up on tower. He leaves the ball behind in doing it, though. And Sentinels with a very quick rotation and maybe a temporary setup if they can lock things down here. They got the team to do it, and a snipe in the hands of Snake by two. Snake by showing that he can go off with the sniper as well as he takes out one with a direct headshot. Efficiency going for Snake by putting points on the board for Sentinels. And look at that, look at this cheeky play out of Lethal. Love this position right here, but it looks like he oh. is going to be spotted and is drifted in with the kill. Snake fight now going to try to take down this player, breaking through the garage. He does have the help that he needs, but that ball is off the map as Sentinels oh simply don't have the numbers to compete in these rounds of slays. What a sick play in the making at a snake fight there, though, right? The slide to get the ball off the map, the movement, and then drops. The drop ball almost makes a play. Oh, well, it happens, though. Drift not too worried about it. He'll drop lethal. Looks like he goes down at two. They just need one good setup. If they can get their slays, they can do it. But Sentinel's not making it easy. Atso with two, though, on the feed. That's the heat wave back. And the ball in their hands as well, assuming they can take just one more. Bullet having some trouble with it. And the longer Sentinels milk that fight, the harder it'll be to get away with this ball. Bullet putting the heat wave to work immediately, making the player one shot, but not wow. able to get the kill. Snake Mike gonna slide in and put him down. World 2 able to find the kill onto Adso, and just like that, three out of four members go down for Knights and Sentinels, able to put some good points on the board. This said, you know, good round of sure. all time, and we'll see Sentinels right back in it, and you might have just been right. That's the thing. What was once long stints of time out of Knights, you know, setups out of them has now just become, you know, a couple seconds of scrappy ball time here or there as Sentinels close the gap very quickly. So a little worrisome for Knights. They need to lock this out, lock it out soon, or else Sentinels are going to start to bring their A game to this one. 92 and counting as they just try to squeak out a couple seconds. Somehow brings it to 94, but their whole team goes down in the process. And Sentinels, now it's their turn. Lethal with the heat wave in the hands, looking to find his third kill here as Sentinels rotating the ball back toward the tower side, making a very long route for Knights to have to commit to in order to break the tower side setup. And look at that, 65 points and counting here for Sentinel. Snake by hitting the perfect kill to take down one to try to get a hold of the sniper rifle, but he goes down as well. Oh no, the longer the time ticks here, Tony, the more worried you get about Knights and their chances of coming back in this game. Sentinel starting to clutch up. Lethal just trying to stay alive. Royal 2 comes in with the save, so Lethal doing his job well. You can see them win the most of the trades in this situation, too, so the ball's still on their side. And look at that, that score, Tony. It's about to tie. That it is, and they're finally able to force Frosty to drop the ball. Two down goes Sentinel. The numbers. third one might end up falling here as Knights are trying to push down the mud side ramp, but the Knights oh. gonna take down one. Atso goes down as well, and once again, Knights are trying to Wait, clear a house. It. They have the ball in hand. Three, oh my two, God. no! <laughs> two seconds left. And Tapping doing everything he could to get him but they can still do it off of here. They're gonna try to rotate the ball out through bottom mid, but doesn't live. He'll hand it off. And can they, yes, they will just <laughs> barely get that 99th second or 100th, I guess, through. Knight's gonna close round one. And man, was that a nail biter towards the end. A nail biter is right, and that's what it was. Knights going the distance, but able to take that first round. Now they're just one round away from sending sure. us into a game number five. Alex, this is the first series that we have here on the B Street. You gotta admire the progress, that's for sure. But I think if that went if that went on for another minute, Sentinels would have won it. Just at the rate they were going. And look at the momentum they've gained off of this now too. Now they're starting strong. They've got the snipe. They got a ball hold. Just about contesting the camo now. You can see PK put all their resources focused on it. 
Yeah, Sentinel was starting off this round a lot better. Getting the slates it almost seems oh easy God. as another three down for Knight. And Sentinel's not dropping that ball whatsoever. We even see camouflage in the hands of Frosty. Now, notice how Snakebite had that ball over towards the tower side. One of their teammates spawn over towards A. Sentinels recognize that, and they immediately rotate that ball all the way down the A side of the map. I actually don't think that's what happened, Tony. I think they, they left Snakebite behind with the ball in the tower, and they rotated and flanked in the back A and won their fights. That's what I wanted to point out. It was so massive out of Sentinels to uh, to not turtle up with the ball. And because of it, they got 44 seconds and counting. They'll tr oh, not quite toss it off the map, though. Stay by not able to get that ball off the map here. So now Knights are going to take advantage, putting their first points in for round number two. Tapping buttons, going in for that top mid control, dropping down to bottom mid and going immediately for a challenge. An excellent place grenade right in between two players, but he does end up losing his team. One of his teammates, Drift, ends up going down as well. So now tapping buttons forced to rotate back towards Bullet, who's playing the ball off the map. 19 scrappy seconds. Knights will pull out of that exchange. Can they get any more? You can see Camel about to pop up here. Frosty, great damage on the one. He'll cut him off. Looks like he's going to have to bounce out of this fight, too. Roll 2 will pick up the kill. Roll 2 just going to try to stay up in this situation. You can see the man is under pressure. Repulsor on the arm of that player as well, but it doesn't matter. Back smack, apparently. And he converted to more. Excellent shot coming out of World 2. He is going to earn the assist. Another player tries to climb up towards Tower 2, and he sends him packing right into the hands of Snakebite. Well played by Sentinels, and just more ball time going towards the boys in red. Snakebite now going to rotate that ball once again over toward the A side of the map as Knights Drift has it checking every corner. He knows that Sentinel's going to be anywhere on the map. They become so much more difficult to not only kill, but predict in this round. Getting aggressive in situations you'd expect him to be defensive. Just flying up into Bullet there too. He'll take that fight that was lethal. Because of it, you can see Drift now down at number 60 points already to Sentinels. Knights with a temporary hold here. Can they get out about a mid with it though? Looking unlikely. You know, Knights were looking really good, especially towards the early round one, but this has been all Sentinels so far, and I've been so impressed. Frosty getting right by enemy lines, earning himself an assist, and once again having the sniper rifle in the hands of oh. one of the most deadliest players that we have in our game. What can he do? Frosty just trying to get an angle. In the meantime, Knight's not going to give him one, though. Why bother leaving A when they got the setup? Frosty needs to come to them. Drift already with the kill on the B. Tapping it to get aggressive. Might have regretted it, though. That's a 2v1 to delete him. All well, it happens, though. Knight's starting to catch up in points here. Still collecting time, 45 and counting. Drift off his spawn, going to do damage. Use some nades there, too. The bullet just locking down the entry. But for how long? World 2 able to get that initial kill onto the Knight player while Frosty finds a snipe on the tapping oh. button. Frosty gonna get a double kill on the feed and Snake Fight takes down Drift. And now you're seeing that ball in okay. the hands of Sentinels once again. They're looking to tie up these rounds. They do not want to go to a game five. Knights, their only chance to bounce back here. They need to control this camo. They need one coordinated push to break through and stop this hold. It looks like they have done neither at the moment. That camel gonna go to Frosty. You already got Royal 2 and Snakebite up on the map. The ball being rotated in the meantime, Sentinels could lock it out if Knights do not find an answer. They got it played. So I guess bottom mid will be the contest, but you see how ready they are for this. Assist coming in out of Royal 2 as Frosty able to get the kill. Assault rifle out. Royal 2 earning another assist and quickly rotating that ball back towards his teammate. But they don't have a clear round of slays yet. They are able to take it down. One that ball still towards bottom mid. Royal 2 finally able to break out of bottom mid. We do see the tower side control, and that might just be it. I'm not sure Knights can break this final setup coming in out of Sentinels. That quick round of slays, the nail in the coffin in for round two and round two looking a lot different than round one tony sentinels they found an answer they found something and knights unable to keep up can they still clutch up though they've done it once they got to regain 
I mean, I, I, as of right now, I'm really worried about Knights. I mean, momentum has sure. just swung in, in the hands of Sentinels. And at this point, they are one round away from not only taking the game, but also taking the series. Knights have played lights out so far. They probably played a lot better than people at home expected. Sure. But Sentinels are here. And the moment Sentinels start making plays, start coordinating, you wonder if they'll ever stop. That's a big trade, though, to delete Frosty. It does give Knights access to maybe a temporary hold here. You can see Royal 2 not going to let him have it for too long, just pastoring him, cross A. Starting to lose numbers here, too. Any cheeky time you can pull off is great. And the toss with the ball out to baitable spot, going to give maybe Knights access to the ball once again. Royal 2 just going to milk his life all while this happens. Well, Sentinels did go three down, and Knights have all of their players alive sure. at the moment, so this might be what Knights need. They already have some early points on the board. Heat Wave and Camouflage combination in the hand of Bullet finds one over toward the Rat, do rat Door. Now we're going to have to rotate back over toward the A side and make sure nobody is breaking through. Bullet needs to find where Sentinels are going. Meanwhile, Knights on the feed have already put them two down. Trip just trying to get the ball out of their, their way. In the meantime, pick up a kill instead. That's Frosty now down for the count. Can you take another? It looks like Lethal Royal 2 will make quick work of him. You start to wonder whether or not he should have rotated that ball to B, maybe to a play spot, just to take advantage of the timing there. And because he didn't do it, lost his life. Now it's Sentinels with a temporary hold. Worst case scenario, they send that ball off the map. Frosty able to take down Tapping Buns on the kill feed. Drift and Axel going to answer back with back to back kills. So now we're seeing Snake Bite. Rotating that ball towards his teammate, going down to oh one shot, not able to get away. Atso does hunt him down. Three down goes Sentinels once again. Knights in early control. Trying to take advantage of everything here while well, they do it. Camo about to pop. Might be a numbers advantage to get to it. My god, the bait and switch. How is Drift alive here? Tapping right above him to lend support. Despite all their efforts, somehow you can see Sentinels still getting camo in this situation. So difficult to kill, but lethal, or sorry, you know what? I think it was, it was Sentinels that did get the camo, right? Lethal gonna come in with a sneaky backpack, back smack, uh, and more, too. He's still going. Yeah, Axel was almost able to steal away that camouflage, but Lethal coming in and demanding it right back. Able to get the outgun onto the cut side, then going in for the second one. His teammates are going to grab those kills, and now we're seeing Slaves start to go in favor of Knights. Lethal going down to one shot, quickly going to try to stay alive, tries to get that ball out of harm's way, but his teammates still find the kills oh. on the feed somehow. It's Snakebite coming in with the crucial triple kill. Well, there's a good reason why Lethal managed to stay alive a little longer. There he's got Snake Bite beside him, killing the entire team. And he goes right from triple kill to ball time as well. So the efficiency out of that player. World 2 going to try to lend support. He's got Frosty with him on the perimeter. It looks like they might be rotating the ball to get it out of here because PK hot on the collapse. So I like to play it as Sentinels. Keep it away from the opposition. Collect that scrappy time. Unless they lose their numbers here. Let me tell you, I played plenty of keep away when I was younger, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. But once again, Knights putting Sentinels lead down and early points on the board. They've already passed the 50-point mark in your Pittsburgh Knights. Alex, do you think we're going to a game five? It's possible. If they lock it down here, I think Dredge is the man to do it. Still got the snipe, still got seven shots to work with. They're, they're going to focus fire on him, though. You can see him one shot back B. Repulse off the map, though. There goes the ball. Drift going to come back in the fight and has an answer of his own. There's one. Not going to get the kill with the snipe, though. That snipe will transfer. And uh-oh, it's Frosty who has it. Sniper rifle and repulse in the hands of Frosty. Frosty going to utilize that equipment to immediately gain height onto the tower side of the map. But Lethal not able to stay alive with the heat wave. Royal 2 hunting down 1 2. Go down for Knights. But Sentinel still don't have the ball in hand. Sentinel still at a deficit. Knights finding ways to hold on to the lead they've gained off the opening here. Despite not really controlling majority of the sandbox, all well, it happens, right? Royal 2 locking down the heat wave. Frosty, I believe, had the sniper a second ago. We'll see if it's back on his hands. They're not collecting time in this situation, though. They're going to need it. 
Yeah, it was a weird situation for Sentinel. They slayed out over towards the B Street side of the map, but that ball was on the dummy side. So by the time they got the slays, they rotate. They have to get another round of slays before they're oh. able to commit to the ball. But now we're seeing Knights start to find the kills. We do see tapping buttons breaking right over toward the tower side of the map. And we both know how strong tower side is on wow. Oddball Live Fire. Tapping with a massive double, but the awareness and a drift and the timing at a PK overall is what secured him this control. We had a flank and the beautifully timed collapse and tapping. He's just going in off this. Oh my God. Can they lock this out, Tony? Tabby Buzz going off right now, putting the, putting the repulsor wow. to work, taking down two players. 77 points here for Knights. And again, they're one round away from sending us to a game five, but he's not able to take down Snake Bite. You gotta respect Tapping's play there, right? Just doing anything and everything he can to just do damage, maybe get a kill as he goes down. Just an efficient player. Drift doing the same. He'll take one, snap onto his second. Can't quite clean it up, and tapping buttons flying through center map. He'll do so. Adso going to come away with some time here. Less than 20 seconds to bring this to a game five. You can see him just tagging up the camo. He wants his team to grab it. Is that what he's trying to say? I, I, I feel like he's trying to say Please something. Please get camo. We need <laughs> Who's got it? Drift. He's about to make a play with it, too. Camouflage in the hands of Drift at the moment. There is a player that tried to side to slide in, and that's all two goes down, but Frosty coming immediately in for the cleanup kill. Body shot coming in out of the S7, putting it to work immediately. Sentinels, this is their time to shine. They need a guaranteed setup. Need a good 20 to 30 seconds off this hole, but as I say, and look who's dead, everyone but Frosty. Massive play to take one, spins and takes a double. <laughs> That's the kind of damage you want to see, but is it enough? Tony, less than 10 seconds. I don't see anyone on Sentinels nearby. And for five seconds now, we are looking at the Knights not only taking this round, but taking the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a game number five. Not expected. Not an expected result for this series, that is for sure. Tony, you predicted 3-1, I predicted 3-0, so in the end, we're both wrong. So now it's not 1-0 anymore. Now it's tied, by the way. But man, what a series we're witnessing. And what a day of Halo this is about to be if this is just our first series. We've got a lot of games left to play. We're just getting started. I, I feel like this series has had, had an emotional roller coaster. It, 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 it's felt like an entire tournament at this point. It has point. been quite a journey. And, and we are going into game it's been, it's been five and nights having the chance to pull off one of the biggest upsets that we might see here wow. in Kansas City. Stats on screen. What do you see, Tony? 35 at a tapping, 42 at a snake bite, though. I mean, there's some there's some slays going in favor of, of Sentinels. Sentinels were in it the entire time, but I think it was really the efficiency coming out of Knights. I mean, they, they played oddball to perfection yeah. right there. I think one of my favorite plays was, it was just how they were breaking setups so quickly, so effectively, right? That, that flank at a drift with the tower side set up, he sneaks behind him, he puts two shots into one player, drops a nade in a second spot, and he leaves both the fights and looks at top tower. And it looked risky, but he had so much faith in his team in that moment that he knew the damage he did in those two places was enough to just disregard it and focus the tower fight. And lo and behold, he gets three assists, I think, in the end of that exchange. So just the, the faith that you have in your teammates in a perfectly timed collapse we saw at a PK, it's the efficiency, Tony. Like you said, I think that's how they bounce back in that third round. And that efficiency, hopefully, it carries them to the goal because at this point, they are so close to reaching it. I mean, Knights already won the game two Slayer, so they've already proven that they can go toe to toe right. with Sentinels when it comes to Slayer. The, the only thing that I'm kind of worried about is that the only wins that they've gotten on Sentinels have been on Live Fire. Uh -huh. We're not gonna play Live Fire a third time in the series. We haven't played Recharge <laughs> yet though. That is a big question mark, technically. Here's the damage on screen. Tony Snakebite, of course, with the most kills, typically comes the most damage. But I don't care what combo it is, Tony. I just want to see some big plays out of both sides here because this is the final game in the series, the first series of the day. And what a series it has been. Anyone could walk away with a dub here, whether it's Knights or Sentinels. Game number five, it is do or die here for both of these rosters. Knights looking to pull off the major upset and Sentinels looking to take their rightful throne here. Sword on the map, 
camouflage, shock rifle, all the goodies you want to see, and we are starting on board with Lethal. And what does it start with? A trusty BR as well. Lethal with positioning up top, Matt. But as he's up there, look at the quick little movement out of PKs. They slip away with camo, but not for long. Lethal here to even the odds. There's the sword coming into play, though. That'll sit out bottom mid. And all well it happens, look who grabbed the shot. Looks like Frosty going to make that a priority. And I love Frosty positioning here over towards top gold side of the map. You can watch the cross with anybody trying to rotate from the control side over towards A with that elevation. I, I hate spawning over towards bottom gold, but there is no doubt that this top gold part right. of the map, this top attic side, is a power position. We'll see what Frosty can make of it. He's got Lethal nearby to help him out as well. Here's the setup already unlocked, by the way. Tony, you got Royal 2 opposite side map on A. So Knight's already off the rip. Options limited. How do they break out of this, right? Playing off of each other's team fire, the damage to find openings. Do you sneak through bottom mid? Try to go for a tricky play here or send multiple? It looks like they sent two out each side to split their numbers and try to attack them. Lethal staying alive toward the gold side of the map, but does he know that there's two Knights players starting to advance forward here towards Attic? We do see Drift taking the top side, and we might see a player go toward the gold stairs. Already early engagement coming out of Drift, and you know he has a paddle set up for Mark. He is a marking his, he's marking oh. enemy team left and right. Biggest thing I think though is playing off of that initial kill, that, that first opening. Tapping was the one to do it, so Drift gonna come in, clean up Frosty, that's a shock for Drift. You know what that means, went out the door, can he ice up and hit it, though, Repulsor not gonna connect. And he had all the tools of destruction there, but unfortunately none of them gonna work out. Lethal gonna slip away. And that player was, was sneaking it over towards Drift on the top gold side. He had the repulsor. I think his action was, if he would have repulsed them out of that doorway, he could have sent them packing towards mid-map and most likely stayed alive on gold side despite being one shot. But sadly, the repulsor didn't work exactly oh. the way that oh, he no. wanted. Frosty able to pull off the big double kill. Lethal not able to find the kill despite having the sword. But three out of four members still go down for your Pittsburgh Knights. Knights working hard to keep the trades up in the situation. Last thing they want is the, uh, the deficit to extend. There's a two kill advantage here for Sentinels. Royal 2 gonna get aggressive though. Spawners up an elevator and not for long though. You got Snake by pitching from the opposite side. You'll clean up two and that's three now dead. Atso last one up but not likely for long here. You can see he's sitting on grapple. Not gonna stay up. Snake by just putting it together. Look what he's got to work with here. You said it before, everybody on your team needs to be able to pop off with the power weapon. Snakebite already able to find the body shot on someone. Meanwhile, World 2 going down to one shot. Excellent shots, but more importantly, staying alive and trusting his teammates to come in for the cleanup kill. Here come the equipment that we talked about. Tony Snakebite still working with the grapple to get aggressive. He's got Royal 2 in tow to clean up the kill. It's that combination, right? The two-man push up through perimeter. Even if you're not holding a traditional setup, if you're working together with your numbers, you can make plays. I see Snake by lining up a nade shot there too. Gotta be very careful about where you push, especially with Snake by this shot. I'm getting very worried for Pittsburgh Knights. They're allowing this game to get out of hand at the moment. They need to find a way to slow down Sentinels. If it becomes right. a double digit game, Sentinels will simply play their lead, which they do better than almost anybody that we have in our league. It's very true, Tony. The best way to shut them down is to make sure they don't have this shock in hand. Hopefully ice up in this fight, but Frosty making it so difficult. See how he cuts off both sides there too. Nade down one side, BR other. Got the camo about to spawn here as well. Numbers advantage and to give Sentinels an opportunity once again. And Tony, you already talked about a double digit advantage. What does that mean for their chances? Looking kind of grim at the moment. And yeah, Knights are looking gassed right now. Yeah. Sen Sentinels are dictating the pace, and Knights are simply allowing them to do so. Frosty going in for the challenge Pressure. onto the A five. Doesn't even need to get the kill as the assist gonna come in. There is one player trying to make it down to the Bangalore pit to play their life, but Frosty simply hunts them down. 31 to 20 game going to Sentinels. Just collapsing from all sides. Knights cannot seem to find an answer. How do they slow it down though? Is the worry here. They need trades, they need kills to get a breather, to start to set the pace, but Sentinels have been the ones to lock it down. And is that going to carry them to the finish in this game? Tony, they still got an 11, sorry, 10 kill advantage. Bullet stays alive here towards that control side of the map. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm 
I'm a fan of this position because if they're able to get the slays off the Sentinels and rotate over toward the gold side, they can still spawn trap the enemy team towards Longhorn, toward that C side of the map. But off the screen, Frosty coming in, laying down the law with the double kill. Nasty Bullet tries to answer with the sword, not oh. able to do so. The nade will take down one, but we still have a double digit lead right. in favor of Sentinels, and we are approaching the fourth quarter. These trades aren't enough for Knights. Some great individual playmaking we're seeing, but it's just that. It's just individual plays, right? They need to be 2 v one Need to use their numbers to ensure they come out with kills. And don't die in the process. Like this fight right here, right? Dangerous situation for tapping buttons to challenge. And as Real 2 keeps them weak, you start to wonder, do Sentinels get aggressive in control? Frost will be the one to do it. Tapping will ice up, but look at them lose their resources here. Especially with Royal 2 sitting up above. Royal 2 almost able oh. to line up the first shot with the shock rifle, but hits the second one. That was Purdy coming out of Royal 2. Six kills away from not only taking the game, but taking the series. Snakebite able to find you another oh kill. That's going to be a double coming out of Snakebite. He is coming in hot, and things are not looking good for Knights. They, they, oh, no, they Tony. Ran out of energy. It's not just a win. This is steak territory. This is Kansas City barbecue steak territory right here. Do they do bar barbecue steak? <laughs> they must. I haven't had it yet, but I should. We're about to get it on screen, though. 48 to th Okay, 31. They bounced out of it, but this win, I mean, inevitable. I don't know about barbecue steak, but you know what? The way they're cooking, this might be burnt ends. Yeah, and it, 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 might, it might be some burnt ends that we are seeing here. 49th kill being reached here by Sentinels. They are simply one kill away. There it is. Sentinels finally able to put down Knights. But man, did they play great. Honestly, PK sure. playing lights out in that series. Disappointing end to the series, I'm sure, for them. They didn't want to go down like that in, uh, you know, somewhat dominant fashion. But, I mean, bringing them to game five, what a massive performance at a PK, and it gives you the impression that they are not stopping, right? Their potential, especially as the tournament goes, goes on, could continue to improve.